He was a teen prodigy with an on-court arsenal to match his brash New York attitude. He was the Iceman of tennis, cool under pressure. The silent Swede was the sport's first rock star. Alone, they were great. Together, they made history. Bjorn Borg and John McEnroe. Code violation, verbal abuse, default Mr. McEnroe. Whoa! Game set match point for The fiery American's on-court antics never overshadowed his exquisite talent with the racket. Bjorn Borg, in his prime, there was no one better. When Bjorn was coming on court, everybody thinks that he cannot lose. He was one of the first pop culture guys on the tour who was just unbelievable to have for tennis, and he did so much, not just on the court, but also away from the court. Their most famous match produced the greatest tiebreaker ever and ended with Borg capturing his fifth consecutive Wimbledon title. It, it was a very magic, special moment. McEnroe would win Wimbledon the following year and push Borg into retirement. McEnroe ends Borg's five-year reign. After falling to McEnroe in the 1980 and 1981 US Open finals, Borg walked out before the award ceremony. The 25-year-old never played another major. Together, they created a rivalry that changed the game. My favorite tale was uh, when Bjorn and I went to Asia with Roger and, and an exhibition tour. And the week before at the uh, ATP finals, he got sick and wasn't able to finish the event. And we both thought he's going to reti retire um, and, and not play, you know, pull out. And he played and he talked about how much he loved the traveling and he loved the press conferences and he loved just, you know, being around the people and everything about it. And I'm like, this guy just played 40, 45 weeks of a year. He's playing a couple of meaningless exhibitions that we're part of. We were like the opening act. And there was that, that ab absolute love of the game uh, was something that really rubbed off on me, that made me feel like this guy's, you know, a, a super special person and made it feel like, because we were going to like all over the place in a very short period of time. And it just, just being around him and getting a chance, you know, it's one of the only times I was ever on the court with him. So that, to me, I mean, I've obviously commentated and seen him play 500 times, you know, so you could go in a... But that week that we were together was really special. What about you, sir? I agree with you. Because we... <laughs> no, definitely we had a good time. And to spend a little time with him, uh, as we know as players, our personalities, just to, to understand him more, Roger. In, in that kind of way, and such a nice person he is. But that was, I agree, it was unbelievable. He's trip. really as nice as he appears, <laughs> <laughs> unlike us. I don't, I don't speak for myself. <laughs> Let me just tell you this, uh, you're obviously a class act. I've loved watching you play. Commentating your matches has been a privilege. Uh, you are the most beautiful player that I've ever seen on a tennis court. I idolize Rod Laver, so that tells you something. Um, thank you for everything you've done. That's all I can say. Your absolute love of the game. I mean, it rubs off on all of us. And uh, I got goosebumps just feeling that because it's been a pleasure to watch you these last 20 years. Roger, I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Roger, you are the best. Uh, to follow you, to be part of your history of tennis and uh, Leve Cup, uh, to be a friend with you. I uh, appreciate that very much. Wish you the best of luck in the future.